NASA is celebrating the end of an historic seven-year mission to bring an asteroid sample back to Earth. The capsule carrying the sample landed safely yesterday in the Utah desert. This, by the way, is the first time NASA has ever collected a sample from an asteroid, and it's the largest retrieve from space since the Apollo moon rocks over 50 years ago. Our Mark Strassman has more on this. This moment, seven years in the making. A NASA probe returning to Earth with pieces of an asteroid. A time capsule from the birth of our solar system. It was charred, but it came in at 27,000 miles an hour, so we expected that. Otherwise, it looked perfect. Liftoff of OSIRIS-REx. The OSIRIS-REx mission, an engineering marvel, launched in 2016. Two years later, it caught up with Bennu, a near-Earth asteroid the size of the Empire State Building. The spacecraft spent a year and a half mapping Bennu, searching for a safe place to collect a sample. Then finally, dodging boulders, briefly plunged its arm into a small crater. And we have touched <laughs> Like a vacuum cleaner, the spacecraft sucked up asteroid rocks and dust, about a half pound's worth, and locked it away for the 1.2 billion mile journey back to Earth. This is the largest sample of extraterrestrial material that will be brought back to Earth since Apollo. Lori Glaze is NASA's head of planetary science. And the challenge is to keep the sample as pristine as possible? We've got to keep that sample uncontaminated by us. To protect the samples, this is the staging area. NASA built an ultra clean, state of the art lab at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. It's the same building that houses the Apollo moon rocks. Deputy curator Christopher Sneed's already imagining opening the Bennu samples in this lab. It's going to be an incredible wow moment. We're going to learn a lot of new things. There are going to be unexpected surprises. Bennu is rich in carbon and could contain the chemical building blocks of life. NASA's new samples, four and a half billion years old, could provide clues about how planets like ours formed. These samples are very small, but they can answer some of the fundamental questions about the formation of our solar system, where the ingredients from life came, and perhaps how common that might be in the universe. Bennu has intrigued NASA for another reason. There's a chance, a remote 1 in 2700 possibility, the asteroid could collide with Earth in the year 2182. It's worth tracking. It's absolutely worth tracking. But not necessarily worrying about. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not losing any sleep over it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> the better odds. Bennu will tell us more about our solar system's beginnings and how we became us. Mark Strassman in Houston. And joining me now to discuss is Derek Pitts. He is the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, also served as a NASA solar system ambassador since 2009. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. We so appreciate it this morning. I want to start with asking you why these samples were taken and what scientists are really looking for here. The reason why the samples were taken is because asteroids represent sort of like a deep freeze history repository uh, from the early, uh, early history of our solar system. I mean, if you want to learn about what the solar system was like when it was first forming, the place to look is in asteroids. Mm -hmm. Asteroids kind of exist as an uh, undisturbed relic, if you will, an un undisturbed sort of vault of what the early conditions were like. And so for us to learn about that and learn more about how the Earth formed, it's good for us to study asteroids. Why? Why is it important to know about those early stages in the solar system? Well, part of the reason is we want to know more about our origin. We want to understand how solar systems like this come into existence, because this also helps us when we look around the rest of our galaxy at stars where we are now seeing other planets. It helps us understand how those planets may have come into existence. So it adds to the general body of knowledge. It helps us understand about our solar system. It helps us learn what to expect when we explore solar systems orbiting other stars. And I wonder if you can talk a bit about how historic this moment really was. I mean, is this sort of setting precedent for future missions? 
Well, in fact, this is great for the United States. This is great for NASA. It's the first time it's happened. This is not the first time a sample has been returned from an asteroid. In fact, the Japanese Space Agency did so in 2010 and also in 2018, uh, returning asteroid samples. So for us, but this is a really large sample. It's 8.8 .8 ounces, which is a lot. That gives us a chance to distribute it among a lot of scientists to study. But at the same time, it also uh, confirms our understanding of how we might be able to send spacecraft to study other asteroids as well, indeed adding more to our body of knowledge about our solar system. And Derek, I want to mention that part of the journey is bringing the sample back home. The second half of that is being able to study what we have. And as we heard there in Mark's story, contamination is a big challenge here. Can you speak a bit about what scientists can do to get over some challenges like that and use what they have once it's brought back home? Well, one of the first things that happens is this asteroid is put under a nitrogen atmosphere. In fact, all other air is purged from the environment of the asteroid while it's here on Earth. And during its time here on Earth, all of that material will be kept in nitrogen environments away from uh, regular air so that there is no contamination. So that means all of the vessels that's carried in all of the lab facilities where it's studied all are working under lab hoods where no outside air is allowed. And this keeps the uh, the sample pristine so that we don't see any remnants of Earth's atmosphere or Earth's environment wrapped in this. And that's incredibly important for us to make sure we are getting just the pure sample of the early solar system and not something from today's Earth. Okay, a very fascinating conversation. Derek Pitts, thanks so much. We appreciate chatting with you. Thank you for having me.